Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KON Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. This show is made possible by the McPherson Tax Defense Group, 1-800-BEAT-IRS, beatirs.com. That's B-E-A-T, IRS, serving Alaskans, Americans since 1978 with two generations of tax defense attorneys. We're honored to have with us David Limbaugh. He's a lawyer, nationally syndicated columnist, political commentator, commentator, author of six New York Times bestsellers. They include Jesus on Trial, The Great Destroyer, Crimes Against Liberty, Bankrupt Persecution, and Absolute Power. And, of course, he's the brother of Rush Limbaugh. He's a practicing attorney in Missouri. David Limbaugh, thank you for joining us on The Joe Miller Show. Joe, thanks for having me, and I might as well announce it here first. Not that anybody's as moved as I am about it, but it's now my seventh New York Times bestseller because I just found out that this one made the list. Fantastic, and it just came out. It's called The Emmaus Code. That's what we're going to talk about today. A very interesting book. A lot of Christian. Now, this is an expressly Christian book. We were talking about that a little bit during the break. I'm not going right. to steal your thunder on this, but a lot of a lot of Christians look at the Old Testament and they say, "Oh, that's all Greek," or you know, "That's for another time." It doesn't really have any relevance to us today. Sometimes even people try to create excuses for the Old Testament because there's stuff in it they don't like, whether it be Levitical law or whether it be God ordering certain people to you know slaughter men, women, and children in certain areas. Tell us why you wrote the book, and then you can get into the substance of it. Okay, I uh, became a Christian maybe 25 years ago, and I did it largely through. Uh, the Old Testament. I studied apologetics, the defense of the faith, and uh, why Christianity is true. And I was always a believer in God, but not necessarily Christianity. And the way I really got into it was through the Messianic prophecies. I was so overwhelmed by their probity, the specificity with which they were fulfilled in detail, that I uh, was no longer allowed to doubt. I mean, I just couldn't doubt anymore. couldn't deny it, what it was right before my eyes. And um, I... So I started studying the Old Testament and, and studied it in the context of it being Christ-centered. I, I happened on to some materials and mentors early on that introduced me to the idea that the entire Old Testament was Christ-centered, which struck me then as counterintuitive, especially in our culture, which which describes uh, Jesus as some milk toast, mamby, mamby, liberal, tolerant guy, and the God of the Old Testament is some mean, angry, unforgiving fellow. And, and so I was uh, delighted to discover uh, the Bible and Christianity through the, largely through the Old Testament. And so I began to write a book back then called uh, Roadmap to the Cross, and it was before I'd written any other books and hadn't begun as a columnist, and I, a Christian agent rejected it. So I abandoned the idea for a while. And after having written five political books and then Jesus on Trial last year, uh, I was talking to Gregory, my publisher, and we decided that I would resume this project that I started 20 years ago, the centrality of Christ to the Old Testament, and the Emmaus Code. The reason for the title is there's a story in the Gospel of Luke, the Emmaus Road story, where Jesus encountered two of his disciples on the way to the, all on the Emmaus Road, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were despondent, downcast, because Their promised Messiah had died without so much as a whimper. He didn't deliver Israel from Rome like they expected the Messiah to do, and he died a humiliating death on the cross. So Jesus appeared to them, and the Scripture says they were made not to recognize him supernaturally. So they didn't recognize him, and he asked them what they were talking about, and they said, are you the only person in the world who hasn't heard about what's gone on in the last few days, last few months, last few years? And uh, he then proceeded, according to the Gospel of Luke, to open the Scriptures to them, which was only the Old Testament because the New Testament hadn't been written yet, and showed how every bit of it pointed to him. It's all about Jesus Christ. And, and then after he left and they recognized him, they said to each other, did our hearts not burn within us as he revealed himself to us? So it was the greatest Bible lesson ever given uh, by God himself. So this is a... This is, uh, not my original idea. Some people say, why are you writing this? Everybody knows. They, we Catholics, we Lutherans, we've been talking about this for hundreds of years. I, I didn't claim uh, the originality. And, and in fact, Jesus is the one who inaugurated this idea. But I do think it's necessary for me uh, to bring it up, because no matter how steep you guys think you are in this, in this idea, I know a lot of people myself who undervalue the Old Testament, and I wanted to bring it 
to their attention and underscore the centrality of it, its foundational importance to the New Testament, and that it's divinely inspired that the same God uh, works and operates in the Old Testament as does the New Testament. Our God is unchanging. And that Christ was foreshadowed, prefigured, uh, typified, and prophesied in the Old Testament, and all of it finds its fulfillment in Christ in the New Testament. And it's just a, it's a pretty exciting thing if you're, if you're a Christian who gets into this stuff. And even if you aren't, I dare say that it might really intrigue you if you study it. You know, I'm also a lawyer, David, and for our listeners who just joined us, David Limbaugh, a lawyer, nationally syndicated columnist, just came out with his seventh bestseller, New York Times bestseller, The Emmaus Code, Finding Jesus in the Old Testament. And, you know, there aren't many in our profession, David, who are overt Christians, evangelical Christians. Many reject it. There are a lot of people on the political side that are on the left, not necessarily correlated with whether or not you're a Christian or not. But the reality is there's a lot of doubters in our profession. And yet you look at, for example, the, and, and this doesn't go to the Old Testament necessarily, but although the prophetic things there that were fulfilled should be convincing to anybody that really wants to look for the evidence. But one of the most convincing things that I experienced, at least, when I compare it to what we do, looking for evidence, supporting positions, is that you had, what, 11 of the 12 disciples going to their death proclaiming Christ as the risen Messiah, uh, something that a lot of people will say, well, you look at the, the Muslims who will go out and they'll, they'll die for a concept. But this is one in which you don't have a person that dies for something they know to be false. And it, it just, to me, is such a convincing force for anybody that's really looking for the evidence. But in the Old Testament, you've got even additional information out there. You've got additional fulfillments. Tell us a little bit about the obscure in the Old Testament. I mean, there are a lot of books there. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't necessarily think that, for example, the story of Job relates to Christ. Give us a little bit of a correlation there. Yeah, and this book, by the way, uh, I consider it an Old Testament primer. It's, uh, it's a background of the Old Testament, kind of an introduction to the Old Testament that's accessible to laymen, and I think also scholarly enough to intrigue uh, Christian scholars. And it, where I go into each book and give the background, and I give specifically how Christ is central to each point. I go through each book and show how he's pointed to and prefigured. And then, and, and I also uh, give a couple of chapters on uh, background and summary and outline of Old Testament history, just to get people uh, so they'll get oriented. But yes, in going through all the books, and, and there's different Christ threads, the typology, the covenants, and prophecies, and the rest. But you asked me specifically about the book of Job. Uh, the book of Job, I think, Job typifies Christ because he uh, suffered, uh, he was made to suffer on behalf of other people, and he had done no wrong. He was considered righteous. Now, no man is perfectly righteous other than Jesus Christ, but he was relatively righteous, and he was uh, made to suffer, and he questioned God. And by the way, Jesus questioned the Father when he was on the cross, and the Father did not answer him. If you recall, the, the Father was silent. Uh, he didn't verbally answer him. And, and that's what poignantly illustrates the separation of the Father and Son in that brief moment where Christ suffered not just physically but spiritually in an anguishing, uh, in an anguishing experience that we can't possibly imagine. He was tortured on the cross. He was beaten. He died. But the separation from the Father contrasted with the bliss that he, he enjoyed with him in eternity past is beyond our ability to comprehend. But he didn't answer Jesus. Why have you forsaken me, God? And that's basically what Job said to, to God. Why, why do good people suffer? Why I've done everything right? Why are you killing my family? And, and uh, God doesn't answer Job directly. He doesn't submit a formal essay to him and say, here are the reasons, 1A, 1B, 1C. What he does is he takes him on a tour of the universe, and he demonstrates how sovereign he is, how omniscient and omnipotent, how mighty he is, and how he uh, oversees with delicate care every aspect of his creation, down to every hair on our head. And so I think that's an, a, a thematic uh, connection between those two books that just really, uh, that really reaches me. Now, there are others, I'm sure I'm not looking at it right now, but that's the one that, that I remember from my book. So with respect to, let's say, the Jewish community, particularly the Orthodox community that values the Pentateuch and other books of the Old Testament, 
Is this a book that you think will play a special role in perhaps giving them information that might actually act as a mode of conversion? Um, I don't want to be that presumptuous. And it's all in God, and it's a legit, very legitimate question. Uh, it's all in God's hands, of course, and uh, that's not the purpose of writing it. Um, I, I wanted to help fellow Christians who, who, who tend to undervalue, as I said, the Old Testament. And oh, I think some, some Jews, and I, I consider Christians I mean, very close to the Jews. We are, we are in, in unity on Israel, and I have great love for the Jews, and I think God has special love for the Jews. Salvation is through the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. He, he set aside Israel as a, a holy nation of priests to bring the gospel to us through the Davidic line and through Abraham, Abrahamic line and through uh, the uh, Jesus Christ himself, obviously. And I just, uh, even though the Jews largely rejected Christ, I think uh, God still has a, a, a heart for Israel and a heart for the Hebrew nation. And uh, I think some of them might. Uh, I, I don't know if they're in a position to, to their eyes to be open to it because they're oriented a different way. Uh, but if you look at Isaiah 53 and Psalms 22, for example, those Messianic prophecies uh, taken together, it is really difficult to deny. If you believe, I mean, if you believe the Bible is inspired, and Jews do, and if you're looking at it with an open mind, I, I dare say it would give you pause. But but I, I don't want to be presumptuous because I, I know Jews have a totally different interpretation, and, and they don't see the Messiah uh, as a man who would die for our sins. Uh, they see him, they they were anticipated a political or military uh, redeemer, and that's why the the, the disciples were so shocked when uh, Jesus died that way. They believe the Messiah was was to, I mean, excuse me. They believe anybody who died, was hung on a tree is cursed. Well, Jesus was figuratively hung on a tree in his crucifixion, so they didn't think he could be the Messiah. That was another reason. So they have an entirely different orientation uh, toward messianic thinking, is my understanding. And so even if you point to all these things, it may not register with many of them. But I'm not an expert on, on Jewish thought, and so I shouldn't say that. But this is about the Christian interpretation of the Old Testament. Well, fantastic book, The Emmaus Code, Finding Jesus in the Old Testament. I'm not through it yet, but I appreciate the copy that your publisher sent us. I'd recommend anybody that has an interest in the Old Testament. If you're a Christian, you should. It will give you a better understanding and a new appreciation for it. Again, David Limbaugh, lawyer, nationally syndicated columnist, political commentator, now the author of seven New York Times bestseller list books, including The Emmaus Code. We'll have this podcast up if you missed the first part of it, as well as a link to get the book. Stay with us. The Joe Miller Show. We'll be right back. All right, gentlemen, 